Hello everyone, today we are diving into a very new opportunity for digital nomads. More and more countries are offering visa for digital nomads, Spain is only one of them. But the question is, why do these countries give away digital nomad visa and therefore also the residency to their country? And what exactly is it that you need to do to get one of those visas here in Spain? That and more will be answered in today's video. In order to give you a clear overview of what the Digital Nomad Visa here in Spain is, what are the requirements and how you as a Digital Nomad can get it, I am going to talk to an expert who is an immigration lawyer here in Spain. And after that, I will also talk to a US American citizen who has just recently got his Digital Nomad Visa for Spain approved. But for now, let's start this video with the interview of the immigration lawyer from the Bicets group so that afterwards you will get a better overview whether you are eligible for this kind of visa here in Spain or not. Let me introduce Christian to you. Christian, maybe you can start by telling us what options do non-EU citizens have to come to Spain and get the residency here. Hello everybody, thanks for inviting us to do this interview together about immigration, which is my, my passion and Spain. So I hope it will be very interesting for all of you. First of all, when a, when a non-EU citizen wants to come to Spain, uh, basically has uh, five options, which would be to come as a student, to come as an investor if he wants to buy real estate, uh, to come just to spend some time with the family but not working, what we call the non-lucrative visa, to do business or to work for a company as, as a highly skilled professional. And now there is this uh, revolution permit, the digital nomad uh, permit, which is pretty new from January of this year, it came into effect. And it's the, the fifth option that a non-European citizen has in order to come to Spain to live and to enjoy this beautiful country. What exactly is that option? It is the Digital Nomad Visa. What exactly does that mean? The Digital Nomad Visa is for people who want to reside in Spain and work remotely for their companies internationally. And what kind of requirements do they need to apply for the visa? Basically, you need to prove that you can work remotely from Spain, either as an employee for the company for whom you have been working the last years, or if you have your own business uh, to work remotely from Spain internationally for your clients that they are living or have their businesses abroad. So in both scenarios, the concept is I come to Spain to work remotely for companies abroad. Is there like a specific threshold of what people need to earn or what kind of documents do they need to bring for the application? The file is divided into two parts. The first part would be the immigration forms and not to have criminal records in the country where you have resided the last two years and uh, to sign a declaration that you don't have criminal records in the countries where you des resided the last five years. This would be like from the first part the most important thing and the second part of the file you have to prove three elements. The first element is that you can work remotely from Spain. For example, if I work for a company in the US and I want to come to Spain, this company needs to sign a letter where they authorize me to work remotely from Spain. Mm -hmm. The second requirement or key point of the law would be the minimum to be paid, no? the minimum salary or the minimum annual income. Of course, this law wants to attract a certain profile of uh, international remote worker with interesting conditions on salary or incomes. So the minimum would be between 32 to 35,000 per individual. And the third uh, key point of the law is that you have to prove that you have been working for this company or companies as a self-employed that authorize you to work from Spain for at least three months. So to prove that it's not something new. Can anybody from all over the world apply for this visa or are there any restrictions? Like it's open for anybody except for probably EU citizens. Exactly. It doesn't make sense probably to apply for it, right? Exactly. Very good uh, what you said. This law is oriented to non-European citizens. They can apply all non-European citizens. There is no restrictions with the nationality or the country of origin. So it would be all non-European citizens. And of course, the European citizens, they cannot take advantage of this law because they have a better way to get a permit. A foreign salary is usually being taxed quite high. So how is that being handled for digital nomads who come here to Spain? This is uh, one of the attractions when this, the state of Spain or the government approved this law. 
what they filtered in the press is that there were going to be tax advantages for remote workers in Spain to make it more attractive because of course they search profiles with uh, good salaries or good incomes but these profiles also they search for places to reside with a low tax impact. It's part of the law that if you come as an employee you would pay for six years a tax flat fee of 24 percent but Something that a lot of people, they confuse, and uh, that's why I want to emphasize, is that if you come as a freelancer, then you cannot take advantage of this 24% and you have to pay as a regular uh, self-employed in Spain the tax regime between 17 and 49%. So, conclusion, this tax advantage is only for employees of companies. And how long does the process take to apply for the visa? Another of the attractions of this uh, permit is that it's fast, the process. In Spain, uh, in general, the bureaucracy is not very fast. About the digital nomad visa, the type of procedure is a fast-track procedure. So in 20 labor days, in just three weeks and a half, you get the, the permit approved, denied, or request of additional documents. Yes. And it's a permit the length is for three years, so it's quite a long permit as well. They automatically get the residency card, right? Exactly. What about the responses? Are they usually positive or did you get a few that were negative? The files that we process in, in our office, they go all positive because that's why they hire a professional to make it happen. There is some clients as well that when they come, they say, Christian, I have this, can I apply? And perhaps I, has, I have to say no because you don't have this, this and this. So mm -hmm. this, but it's not because they reject the administration, it's because we consider that they don't have the requirements enough to apply for it. Maybe one more question. What exactly is in it for Spain? I mean, there's probably some, some advantage in there for, for the country as well, right? The first one is that uh, this movement of digital nomads and uh, remote workers is growing a lot since COVID, so it's a big target of population. So Spain wants to be a hub to attract these uh, profiles into the country and to compete with other countries because Spain is not the only one. There is mm -hmm. Thailand, there is uh, Greece, there is Croatia, there is everywhere in the Caribbean islands. So this program is not just Spain, but of course Spain has its own positive things to compete for it. So one attraction would be I want to take advantage of this movement to locate them into Spain but why to locate them because second they will have to contribute in the social security in Spain in mm -hmm. the case that they are freelancers in the case that they are employees perhaps also so this will benefit Spain that uh, for example we have uh, our old people and that to receive the pension because now we have a problem in the country that the young generations that we pay social security is not enough to pay the retirement of the old people so this would be a, a way to collect the social security the third interest would be they will pay taxes in spain perhaps not a lot if they are employees 24 percent but still because what happens today is that we have people traveling around the world that they locate in spain but they don't declare anything and the last in my opinion would be to promote spain in general as a country with quality of life with a good culture all organized good weather well to to promote spain as a, as a branch all right, Christian, maybe in the end you can tell the audience a little bit about how you can help digital nomads to get this visa. We help our clients from A to Z. I will help you to prepare the documents. I will uh, fill the forms. I will do the short translations of the documents into Spanish. I will advise you on which document is better to prove that you are international remote worker, which document is better to prove the regular incomes which document is good to prove this relation of more than three months. So we help on all the file. Then we submit the applications with our license uh, as a lawyers. And then if there is any communication with the immigration office, with the public office, it's done through the lawyer. And of course, we have this knowledge on how to, to manage this uh, relation with the administration. Once the file is approved, we give you the hand again and we go together to the police to collect the cars. The concept of this office is to give a personal approach and also to do everything until he gets the, the final result. And then also once everything got approved and the digital nomad gets his residency here in Spain, you can also help with the taxes, right? Uh, after the file is approved and you get the card, we help our clients to file the taxes every, every quarter if they are freelancers, every year if they are employees. Mostly we do this immigration process and the taxes, but if there is any other legal situation, we are a team of lawyers uh, ready to help you. 
All right, Christian, thank you so much for this interview. I really appreciate it. It was very interesting. For you guys, if you are interested in further information, I will drop you a link in the description below where you can actually book a call with some experts here. Thanks a lot. I hope this was helpful for you guys as well. And thank you, Christian. Muy bien, gracias. Thank you, and I see you in Spain. I am currently in Sieges, which is part of the province of Barcelona, and here I am going to meet our next guest, whose name is Mike, and he is from the United States and is going to tell us all about the digital nomad visa here in Spain. I'm going to introduce to you Mike, who is from the United States, and he's going to tell us his story now. Mike, maybe you want to introduce yourself a little bit. Tell us what do you do? What is your job? How did you come here to Barcelona? I am from Cincinnati, Ohio in the Midwest and I was working, still am in fact, with a company that's based in Sacramento, California. I'm a, I'm a software developer for a state of California agency. After COVID, they shut down all the offices and they said we will never return to the office. So I took that opportunity to start traveling. So I came here kind of on a whim, cheapest trip from Cincinnati, got here, loved it, ran out of days, I returned 90 days later. Um, I was pursuing my non-lucrative visa and and I had to say I'm not working, which they said was not a problem because when you are kind of working outside of Spain, they didn't really care, uh, just as long as you're not taking jobs to Spanish. A lot of the rules changed as they got closer to the digital nomad visa. And so I got denied the non lucrative but around the same time, they were doing the Digital Nomad. It was just starting to come about. So I pivoted, I started applying for it, the Digital Nomad visa from Spain in March on June 21st. I was approved. Yes, so exciting. I uh, was just over the moon, I guess is the good phrase for it. And then uh, I had to then pursue my residency card in my Kia, which is a challenge, as we discussed earlier. The agencies will want to represent you, and they charge a very steep fee. It feels a little corrupt, but we won't get into that. It is corrupt, but it's a different topic. <laughs> I searched the site, and I found one about an hour away, very next day. Got there as quick as I could, and then I uh, returned about three and a half weeks later, got my residency card, and I, that was it. I was official, and I had proof. And now I can come and go from the EU. Now that I had my residency card in hand, I can come and go. It's amazing once you get that, because it feels like you've hit the lottery. Maybe you can tell us a little bit more about the Digital Nomad Visa. What they're looking for is people who earn, of their 100% salary, you can only earn 20% from within the country. So your earnings have to come outside of Spain. The requirements are minimum wage. It's more than 2,500 a month then you must have uh, your background check and it needed to be apostille, which is the legal term for authenticated. Then you need to have show proof of residency here in the state. So then you also need bank statements, approval letters from your employer. You need uh, your, any contracts that you had with your employer showing that you've been doing this for X number of months. You're allowed to work overseas and there's no restriction to working abroad, a clean bill of health from your doctor, and then of course all those documents that you provided, now you need to have them translated. How long did the whole process take from the first application until the, well, your residence process? I started collecting data in September of 2022, pursuing my non-lucrative. So I had all of that, and then I got denied, but I still had all of my documentation. I pivoted around early March, and that's when I reached out to this agency in Barcelona. Three months until approval, and then about another five weeks until I actually had my residency card in hand. So close to four, maybe just like four months in total. What would you say is the best of all the digital nomad lifestyle? Freedom. As I mentioned, I flex my hours to California time, but I'm still kind of on my own schedule. And would you say there's any downside of the digital nomad life that I guess for you maybe it is the working hours? Loneliness, because I meet a lot of people, they come into my life briefly, but a lot of these relationships are fleeting. I, I keep saying one of these days I'm going to stop doing this, but I don't really want to. If I sit still too long, I get, as they call, itchy feet, and I just you know, want to get going again. 
So is there anything, any advice you would like to give future digital nomads, anything they need to know about that journey? Yes, I would say that if it's something that you are considering and you can prove it to your employer, do it. Uh, they say that everybody that is on their deathbed, if, when they interview them, do you have any regrets? And they say, I should have done more. And I should not have put off those things. A lot of people say, yeah, when I retire, I want to start traveling. Thank you a lot, Mike, you, for this very insp inspirational last word. Yeah. And um, thanks a lot for your time. I really appreciate oh. it. It was very interesting. I hope you've got a clear overview of the great opportunity that the digital nomad visa here in Spain can be for you. Just in case you are still in that phase where you are dreaming about becoming a digital nomad, I have a different video that might be of interest for you in which I am going to interview digital nomads so that you can learn how they've got to where they are today. So hopefully this is going to inspire you for your own journey. And just in case you are thinking about opening up a YouTube channel to generate an income with YouTube, I do have a free how to YouTube guide that is linked in the description below. So make sure to check that one out because it is meant to get you started with your own YouTube channel. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you've got some value out of it and I would highly appreciate your support. Drop me a like and also subscribe to my channel to not miss out on any further videos. I'll see you in the next one.